All right, Premiere Pro 4K video editor, I'm going to keep this as short and sweet as possible. This video is going to focus on the 25 plus laptops I've had in my studio over the past year and then showcase the timeline playback and export times of each of them in Premiere Pro. With this video, you'll be able to pick the fastest laptop for Premiere Pro of your choice. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're gonna find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. And if this video brings you value at any point, then ever so gently press down on that like button as this will push it out to more video editors like yourself looking for the fastest laptop for Premiere Pro, and I appreciate that a lot. That really makes a difference. Let's get rocking. Diving right into things, let's start by pulling up the playback chart to see which laptops sit at the top of the list. Then we will talk about why they sit up there, and then I'll give you some feedback on how to choose the right one based on playback. After that, we will look at the 4K export times, and then finally, I will categorize the laptops by budget so you can pick the right one for your needs. Now, let's talk about this chart. First off, lower is better. I mean, you don't want drop frames obviously. So when you begin dropping frames in the timeline, your editing experience will ultimately become laggy and frustrating. So what you're seeing is my standard playback test for benchmarking the playback. In a nutshell, I take a nine minute 4K clip, place it into the timeline, add some motion graphics, music, and color grading, and then play it back at full quality. This full project contains 16,177 frames in total, with 7,240 of those frames being motion graphics. Now, before we talk about each of the laptops and what it is equipped with and where it sits on the chart, I wanna jump into a quick overview of the GPUs um, that are most common on the market today. Now as well as the ones taking over <laughs> 30 series. Um, but first up, we have the 10 series, the 16 series, and the 20 series GPUs. Starting at the lower end, the 10 series GPU is an older GPU, but we still find them in the pre-owned market. These are good for 1080p editing, but honestly, integrated graphics are becoming pretty darn good lately, and we are starting to see um, these integrated graphics CPUs outperform some of those 10 series GPUs in some areas, not all areas. Now next is the 16 series. These are good for light and medium 4K video editing. The 20 series are equipped for larger 4K projects and even some 6K if you're that fancy. Moving on to the 30 series, which will be getting into my studio within the week. I'm so excited to begin testing those. And at which point I will have to refilm this entire video all over again, but I figured why delay you from this needed info that you guys have been asking for. Anyway, the 30 series, um, the 3060, has two less gigs of VRAM over last year's 2080 card, um, but roughly 800 extra CUDA cores over last year's 2080. So we shall see how big of a difference that makes once the testing begins. So you can kind of decide... Um, you know, which one you're gonna, you're gonna pick up. The 30 series will be a beast for 4K and 6K, and I can't make any promises, but possibly even 8K video editing. Now the Quadro series are an odd situation in my opinion. They are optimized for creator apps, but often come with less CUDA cores and VRAM. So you'll see in my charts how this pans out. They end up kind of hanging out amongst the more powerful um, GeForce GPUs, which is, has always been interesting to me and it deserves its entire own video, but we're not gonna cover that in this video for brevity's sake. Okay, back to the chart. I know that it took a minute, but I wanted you to have some context before we started running through these things here. On the left side of the chart, the top three best laptops are Intel equipped and on average have anywhere from six to eight gigs of VRAM in their graphics cards. As you can see, the Strix G17 is at the top of the chart carrying an i7-10750H with six cores and 12 threads. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 with the eight gigs of GDDR6 VRAM um, as well. Now do note that it also comes with the 64 gigs of RAM, which will help with playback as it gives Premiere Pro a much higher ceiling in regards to RAM allocation. Next on the list is the HP ZBook Power G7 with its Intel Xeon W10855M, six cores and 12 threads, and the NVIDIA Quadro T2000 with four gigs of GDDR6 VRAM. This laptop also comes with 64 gigs of RAM, and again, it is really making use of it. The combined power of the GPU, CPU, and RAM is a big help for the smooth playback. Now the MSI Creator 15 comes with eight cores and 16 threads with its i7-10875H and the NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super Max Q with eight gigs of GDDR6 VRAM. Rather than 64 gigs of RAM, this laptop comes with a slightly more modest 32 gigs of RAM. Now people often ask, what is the most important component? And this is proof here in this chart that it is not a singular component that you must look out for, but a combination of all three. But for the sake of this video, I will kind of just lay out what I think would be the best combination. I would say a mid-ranged i7 processor, 
six to eight gigs of VRAM and 32 to 64 gigs of RAM will get you optimal smooth playback in the timeline for 4K video editing. Now within the top results, we see a mix of i7 and i9 processors with six gigs and eight gigs of VRAM uh, in the graphics cards. As we move to the right on the chart, we have our first Ryzen equipped laptop and it is the Asus Zephyrus G14. Now this laptop comes with the Ryzen 9 4900HS with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 Max-Q, which comes with six gigs of GDDR6 VRAM. From there, we continue to see a mix of Ryzen 7 and Intel 7 equipped laptops with six gigs of VRAM equipped in the GPUs. All this talk about VRAM, RAM, CPU, GPU, etc. I wanted to point out that this video is a part of a larger playlist all about how to pick the best laptop for video editing. And you can check out that playlist in the end cards near the end of this video to get all of the most common questions answered about choosing a video editing laptop. Now, after the HP Omen, we start to get into the four gig equipped graphics cards and move away from the i7 processors and get into the i5 processors, as well as some U-series processors, which come with integrated graphics rather than dedicated graphics cards. I'll get more info about all those differences in that playlist I just mentioned. Now, I will reiterate before moving on to the export times portion of this video, for optimal 4K editing playback in the timeline of Premiere Pro, not taking into consideration your budget constraints, optimal playback. I would say a mid-ranged i7 processor, six to eight gigs of VRAM in the GPU, and then 32 to 64 gigs of RAM. Now, if you're on a $1,000 to $1,400 budget, then the optimal setup is going to be a Ryzen 7 4800H or 5800H, or an Intel i7 10750H, or the new 11th gen variant of that Intel processor, a six gig card like the GTX 1660 Ti, and then 16 gigs of RAM. Now, if this video is bringing you some value, like I mentioned earlier, gently press down on that like button as that helps it out a ton to reach more people just like yourself. And that is a huge blessing to me. All right, now that we have covered playback, let's take a look at the export times. For this test, I take a nine minute 4K clip, place it into the timeline in Premiere Pro, and then export it out at full quality 4K YouTube settings. Now keep in mind that the export times are a combination of work conducted between the CPU and the GPU. Okay, so I'm not going to spend as much time discussing the export times because as you can see, there is a lot of discrepancy here. The big daddy six and eight gig VRAM graphics cards are leading the charts once again, but from there it gets a little tossy. Okay, so export times have as much to do with how well uh, optimized each laptop is in regards to the components it houses as much as the components themselves. So if a laptop has poor ventilation, it may thermal throttle, which will cause a decrease in export performance, which is why we see the Acer Nitro 5 with its Ryzen 5 4600H and GTX 1650 GPU outperforming a technically more powerful Lenovo Legion 5i, for example. Now for my top two recommendations in each category, remember these are just a good starting point. The year, there, the year, the, there are many other great laptops on the market, but I wanted to keep this short and sweet as I mentioned in the beginning of this video. Now, if you're editing 1080p and occasional 4K, I would pick up the HP Spectre X360 or the Acer Nitro 5. For moderate 4K video editing, I would check out the HP Omen or the Lenovo Legion 5 or 5i. For aggressive 4K and 6K video editing, then consider the Asus Rogue Strix G17, the Gigabyte Aero series, the Asus Zephyrus G14, the MSI Creator 15, or the HP ZBook power. Okay, that list was more than two, but there are a handful of great laptops in that final category, and I didn't want any to go overlooked. Now, curious about the exact pricing and availability of each of these laptops, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase, we'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. That's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Lastly, I wanted to point out that if you want more info about choosing the best laptop, like I mentioned, you can click or tap the screen over here for that playlist. And each of the laptops that are mentioned in this video have full dedicated reviews. So you can head on over to my channel and check those out if you're interested. Until next time, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. My name is Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.